Okay guys, so today we are going to be going through a deadlift session. I'm going to be deadlifting, Gabby's going to be deadlifting. The, the legs are a little sore from uh, last week's mash, but luckily, uh, well, Christoph and Jacqueline can handle it. We're going to be working on our posterior chain. So we thought we'd give you a little video whilst that's happening. Deadlift, in essence, is uh, one of the simplest lifts, and it's the lifts where most people are able to move the most weight. And in essence, all you're doing is picking something up from the floor and standing it up. And we're going to take you through a little bit of the warm-up now, how we want to prepare. Some people get very nervous on a deadlift because uh, the low back can be quite a vulnerable area, and so it's just important to understand how we keep it strong and how we warm it up. So what we typically do, we've got an empty barbell, as you can see before we put the weights on. And what I will typically tend to do is actually start going through full range of motion in my back. So you can see here now I'm going into full flexion. I'll take the bar up and I'll just work a couple of what we call Jefferson curls. And this is just to try and improve the flexion of the back, get the hamstrings warm. And actually, because I'm relatively unloaded, I'm gonna start to add a little bit of rotation. Now, some people worry about flexion and rotation, but especially at this light load, there's no need to worry, and it's gonna be good for warming our back up for the next movement. What I will also do is take the back onto the bar onto my shoulders and I'll do some rotation from above and some side bending just to make sure my hips are warm. So I just nice and easily rock side to side. And then I'll also add in some rotations. You can rotate through both ways. And again, this is really just preparation to make sure the low back's moving and that the structures that help support the low back are feeling warm as well. Okay. So when, when Gabby's ready, we'll start looking at the, the deadlift setup. We'll have a look at how she's moving and we'll see what weight we build up to today. Today we're building up to a 5RM or a 5 rep max. The rule of that 5 rep max is the weights have to stay quick. So that means there's going to be no grinding, no real uh, big loss of position. And, uh, and we'll see what number we get to. So uh, you, you can just lift Gabby in and I'll um, talk through it. So we're still at a very light weight for Gabby. And it's just at these lighter weights, we just want to make sure that the movement pattern's feeling smooth. And what we'll do, once the weight feels good, especially at these lighter weights where we're like, you know, probably at 20% um, or under, we're just making sure the movements feel good. You might do two to three sets of this weight before we start taking the, the jumps, but it's very warm at the moment, so the warm is quite easy. So we're gonna go straight up to 60 now. We've got a, a male bar. Sometimes we use the male bar to lift just because of the, it's a bit stiffer and thicker, which can, can be good for a deadlift. Yeah, so you know, 5RM, um, touch and go, keep it quick. So one of the things you should note now is that Gabby's going double overhand grip, which is quite common for, for crossfitters. So it depends on where your, where your preference is. I tend to lift with a mixed grip, and the reason's just to stop the bar spinning. So when we come into deadlifts, I'll tend to hold through a mixed grip. Some people hold a double overhand grip or, or prone grip as you come through. Uh, if Gabby just goes to the setup for a second, just to show where we are. So if you notice the foot position, we tend to want to hold around about hip width. And these are all going to be rules of thumb. People can, uh, once you get comfortable with the movement, you can choose where you start. So foot's about hip width. Both hands are outside of the, the legs. 
and they're really at shoulder width so just a comfortable grip so when you stand up you shouldn't feel any um, any stress on the shoulders or the barbell and one more thing we just if you come around to the side I can see so Gabby's just going to set up again Good, and just hold the start position. So you notice the, the one thing that we want to see is that the difference between a clean and a deadlift. So I can move a little back, but the hips are often set quite a bit higher in the, in the deadlift. It'd be a bit lower for the start, but it's just to show now. Whereas if you go into a clean setup, Gabby, so you notice there's a big difference in the hip angle between a clean and a deadlift. So we just want to make sure that the athletes are aware of that. A clean pull and a deadlift need to be two uh, distinct movements. Okay, let's move up. So we'll go up to 80. So one other thing we want to notice is that uh, the neck angle can become quite important in the deadlift. Because you only need to take the weight to the hips, you actually don't need to uh, look up and break the angle at the neck. So actually you can just fix the chin fairly into the chest and that creates a nice pattern. We don't necessarily need to look up in order to get there. Uh, so we we're jumping straight to 100. So once the body is warm, you do want the jumps to be relatively big to save energy for the heavy set. The aim of this is to get to the 5RM at the heaviest weight possible, keeping speed and good technique. And so if we're spending too much time on the lighter weights, especially for like um, not so much of a technical lift like a deadlift, it can just uh, take away too much energy. Three to five reps each weight, or no? So, so on the build-up, you just go two to three, what feels comfortable, and then we'll wait till the final set for the five. So one of the most common areas of concern in a deadlift is the low back position. And just to explain a little bit about that, what we want to see is that we maintain the low back in position. What we're not doing is the low back's not moving from extension to flexion or rotating or any other movements. And what I mean by that is you, when in your setup position, you want to be relatively comfortable. So if you're too overextended, it becomes very hard to maintain that position. We also don't want to be too flexed. We want to be somewhere in the middle. It's typically called like a, a neutral spine. The big thing is that that position then wants to be braced, meaning that if I'm slightly flexed here, I maintain that position as I'm driving up and finishing the rep. What I don't want to do is start to really flex through the mid back and then pull just with my erector spiny. So, that in essence is what we want the low back to be. We want it to be fixed and no movement of the low back during a lift. We want it to be braced, protected in its position. So Gabby's gonna go now, she's 110. Still on the build-up sets. So as you can see, easy way, low back was looking good. And um, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to keep building in weight. We kind of, we don't always have a golden rule with, with belts, but especially in these work sets where we're not looking for like an all time five rep max, we won't start using the belt until we're at about 90%. So right now we're still building up, the positioning's still good, it's quick, there's nothing to worry about. And so we're, we're kind of without any equipment, without any belts or anything like that. So we'll see how this set goes. We're at 120 now. So again, 120 easy, 10 kilo jump, 130 now. 
Um, low back position was good, speed was good, so we'll just keep these jumps going until, until we start to see where we are today. So you can see now from the side, low back position was good, no grinding, easy weight 130. So we're at 140 now, this is where we'd probably expect to see a bit more of a struggle. 130 looked easy, um, we're going to see how this, uh, how this set goes now. No, I, like, I think just uh, two reps again, then we'll make a jump. We'll see what we're like if we go 145, 150. And then we'll put, uh, on the next jump we'll put a belt on as well. So 140 position was very good. The rep started to slow down a little bit. So on the next jump, we're gonna put a, a belt on because we're probably nearing that 90%. One important thing about the belt is that it needs to be active, not passive. So especially when you're power lifting, like pure deadlift, pure squat, you don't just put a passive belt on. You actively want to engage yourself uh, with the belt. So we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. So this is the first weight with a belt, we're at 145 on the bar. We're just going to hit the double to see how the speed is, to see where we are for going for the 5 rep max of the day. So the good, uh, the good thing about lift, you can see that uh, Gabby's holding a good position. The speed started to slow down, so we're actually going to go, we're going to try and hit five now at this, so we're going to try for five reps, 145, we're going to try and hold the speed, hold the position, and then we'll move into our drop down set. I'm getting old, I'm getting old, did I? <laughs> so, especially when you get to these heavier weights, rest becomes important as well. So the top end numbers, really having three minutes between each lift is, is needed. Unless you're trying to push kind of like strength under fatigue. However, for like the top end numbers, we want to have a good rest. Make sure the athletes recover between these, uh, between these sets. Okay, let's go, Gabrisha. Stay strong, five reps, let's go. Nice, one, two, three, four. Let's get it, Gary, come on. It's thicker, which can make the uh, the grip. It's stiffer. So uh, there's 145. We hit four. Um, we're going to call it there and start our our drop down. So we're going to go to 90 percent. Of this 145, so we'll take we'll take 15 kilos off, and we're just going to hit five by one at the 90% now. Um, 15 kilos, 145, 140, uh, 130. Sorry. Yeah, actually, you're... <laughs> uh, so now in the drop downs. We, we again just want to hold hold the position, hold the speed. We've got five by one, so at 90%. So it's reduced load and reduced rep scheme. So 
that was uh, Dead of Session. It was uh, the first part, well, the, the first part of the second session of the day. So maybe a little tired from, from this morning session as well. Um, Gabby hit four reps at 145. The fifth rep wasn't there, but the good thing was she, she held the position through the four reps. What we looked to do then, drop down from that number. And today wasn't a day for her to fight through, have a long rest and go back for that five. We held it at the four reps. It got the stimulus that we needed and now we can just move on with the rest of the session.